Let us pray. Good and gracious God, silence within us any voice but your own, that through your word read and proclaimed we might hear your still small voice calling out to us from beyond eternity. Speak to us again words of love and hope and comfort and strength. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture reading today is from Luke 9, verses 10 through 17, in the Pew Bible, page 1055, and then from Mark, chapter 12, verses 41 through 44, starting the Pew Bible at 1034. Jesus feeds the 5,000. When the apostles returned, they reported to Jesus what they had done. Then he took them with him, and they withdrew by themselves to a town called Bethsaida. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. Late in the afternoon, the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they can go to the surrounding villages and countryside and find food and lodging, because we are in a remote area here. He replied, you give them something to eat. They answered, we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all this crowd. About 5,000 men were there. But he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. The disciples did so, and everyone sat down. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke them. Then he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The widow's offering. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They give out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 
So in case you had not noticed in the newsletter, uh, I had mentioned that we're talking about stewardship this month, and we've uh, talked about how we use our time and uh, how God uses time, and uh, God works six days a week and takes a day off and rests, calls it the Sabbath in creation and encourages us to do the same. Uh, we've talked about our stewardship of creation, that God made this world for us and set us here as gardeners to care and tend for creation. This morning, we're going to talk about money. Ushers lock the doors. <laughs> Nobody leaves. I'm kidding, we're not locking the doors. I don't want to get in trouble with the fire marshal. Every parishioner's favorite subject. Don't you love coming to church and talking about money? You know, actually, over the years, what I have heard from people who are new visiting to the church, this church and others, is, well, I looked around at these other churches, and I didn't go there, I didn't stay there, because they were always asking for money. Well, this is one of the reasons why... I like to do stewardship season and a theme, and that's what we've been doing this whole month, is talking about how we use the resources God has given us so that we don't have to talk about money all the time. But at some point, we do have to stop because, quite frankly, if we ignored the topic of money, we would be ignoring a very deep and potentially life-changing spiritual opportunity. Jesus himself says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus knew that it was money that made the world go round. And 2,000 years later, few things have changed. So here we are, and we're looking at two different groups. Jesus and his disciples preparing to feed the 5,000. And a woman coming with just two small copper coins. Now, if we look at both of these, there's some similarities. The woman with two copper coins is bringing all that she has. It was very important to point out that she is a widow. There's no pension for her. There's no social security. She is one of the most vulnerable in biblical times. Widows and orphans the two groups who do not have someone to provide for them. And this woman could not just go out and get a job and make ends meet. So we don't even have to know that she comes with ju just two copper coins to be told that she's a widow. That tells us all we need to know. And Jesus and his disciples are out, and they're trying to get away from the crowd, but the crowd follows them. Jesus is kind, and he preaches to them, and he teaches them. And then he says to his disciples, it's time for you to feed them. <laughs> All we have is five loaves and two fish. It might as well be two small copper coins. It's certainly not enough to feed 5,000. Not enough. Not enough. I imagine we all run into that in our own lives in different and varied ways, but that same feeling that there is not enough goes around. 
In fact, if you watch television and commercials, the whole purpose of commercials is to convince you that you don't have enough and that you need what they're selling. Or else we would be able to watch a full 30-minute program without interruption. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait for heaven to get that kind of TV. There's not enough. There's not enough. D. James Kennedy tells a story of a man who came to Peter Marshall, a very uh, prominent Scottish Presbyterian minister who was at one time the chaplain to the United States Senate. And this man came to Reverend Marshall with a concern, a concern about money. And he said to the pastor, he said, I have a problem. I have been tithing for some time, and it wasn't that bad when I was making $20,000 a year. I could afford to pay $2,000. But you see, now I'm making $500,000 a year, and there's just no way I can afford $50,000. Dr. Marshall reflected on the man's conundrum and gave no advice. He, he said simply, let's pray about this together. And the man said, certainly. So Dr. Marshall bowed his head and prayed with boldness, Dear Lord, this man has a problem. And I pray that you will help him. Lord, reduce his salary back to a place where he can afford to give. <laughs> Even when we have more, it still feels like it's not enough, doesn't it? This is why I paired together the feeding of the 5,000 and the widow and her two coins. I don't think, I certainly have not done that in 15 some years, 17 years actually of preaching. I have not done that. I've not heard another sermon pairing those two together. But the theme is simple. There's not enough to go around. And yet the good news is that in the hands of Jesus... Five loaves and two fish is enough to feed everybody. In the hands of Jesus, one widow's small and meager offering is enough to make a difference. It makes a huge difference in the lives of those who are giving. That woman was practicing what we call in stewardship sacrificial giving. I see that here at this church. I see it in you, in the way that you give of your time and your talents. We had this just little over a week ago when we gathered here on Saturday for a week ago Saturday to clean up the church, we had nearly 30 people show up and we did a whole lot and this place looks good. And the light above your head works. <laughs> because people came and they gave. Now you might look, well, let me rephrase that. Others might look outside and say, that's a small church, mostly older people. What can they do? I say, in the hands of Jesus Christ, we can change the world. Can we change the world for everyone? Hmm. It's more likely that we will change the world one person at a time, one life at a time. It's so easy for us to fall in the trap and think that what I have to give is just not enough. 
I'm here to tell you it is when you give it to Jesus. Because when we hand it over to him, he makes it enough. Because, quite frankly, it's not just you, it's not just me, it's all of us together giving to him. And amazingly, he takes it and he uses it and feeds everyone. Now, if you're looking for a good return on an investment, look no further than giving to the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what happened. Five loaves and two fish and collected, fed everybody, everybody was satisfied and collected 12 baskets enough left over. I'm not very good at math, but I think they came back with more than they left with. There's a message here. And it actually is highly symbolic. If you notice the, the, the number 12, this is enough to feed the 12 tribes of Israel. This is enough to feed all of God's people. When we trust Jesus with what we have, our five loaves and our two fish, we're not only going to feed those around us, but there's going to be enough to feed everyone. So what does this mean for us? It means Jesus was absolutely right when he said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Ironically, Jesus is not quite as interested in our money as the world might think. What Jesus is really after is your heart. He's after your deepest convictions. He's after what matters to you most because you matter to him most. And so a little bit can definitely go a long way. What I want to ask us to do is take, we're going to take just a moment in silent prayer. I'll lead us a little bit and then there'll be a time of silent prayer. But an opportunity for us to reflect on our five loaves and our two fish and our two copper coins and how we might use them together. Let us pray. Loving God, you have provided for us. Often it feels like all we have is five loaves and two fish and two small copper coins. And yet in your hands it is more than enough. In your hands, it provides leftovers enough to feed all your children. And so, O oh God, we take a moment to thank you for what we have received. Help us, Lord, to be good stewards of our loaves and fish, of our copper coins, and help us to follow the example of the widow and your disciples and give back to you what we have received, knowing that you will work in and through us and these gifts. To feed all your people. In Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.